you know, like I, I, I just nerd out on this stuff. I'm like, I need to work on my like intro. Um, I need to ask better questions. I need to not talk over Kiro. I like we do we do 60 minute episodes. Part of me is like, it's way too much. We should just do 30 minutes. Um, you know, our audience is definitely realtors. Like we've gotten away from just like being valuable to buyers and sellers, um, which is fine to me, right? If it's if the goal was part of part of it to be agent attraction, then I think that that's fine. Um, you know, like, I, I don't know. There's so stupid questions too. Sometimes me and Kiro are like buttoned up in suits. I'm like, should we look more casual? Should like, you know, it's like, there's so much shit. Like we have this nice studio. I always joke. I'm like, we're the guys that got keys to the Ferrari, but we don't know how to drive it. Like if you have us on mute, we look pretty good. But then when you take the sound off, I'm like, we could sound a lot better with our questions, our introductions, but like, you know, we're building the plane as we're flying it, you know? Hello, everyone. Welcome. John Carroll here with Beyond the Sale podcast. And this week, I'm so excited to have John Scipioni on the call. John's been a longtime friend, a colleague of, of mine. And um, John is has a team, now, a team now from when we met. Actually, we were both single agents at this. But John now has grown his, his team from being a single agent to um, how many agents do you have now, John, on the team? Uh, there's five of us. Five. Okay, so five, yeah. and then we were just talking before the call at seventy-five million in volume last year. So fa it's fantastic numbers. And so the idea, obviously, of, of the podcast as always is to bring as much value to you guys as possible, really to get to go from understanding really down to the nitty gritty of just cutting all the fluff out and understanding exactly what it takes to to do um, to go from a single agent to a team, or just to you know just to do to as much production as possible. So, John, without further ado, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. It's uh, it's always fun to to jump on here and uh, figure out other ways we can collaborate and brainstorm and and all work together. Because we're all Definitely. going through the same the same dilemmas and and all sorts of stuff. And I'm, I'm uh, you know if, if I'm learn if I've learned something, uh, you know about that that I can share with you and bring value to you and your team, then then I'm always happy to collaborate, man. So perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So John, like I'll just start off with um I think we look at real estate fairly similar. We come from the same background. But what made I guess how did you get into real estate? How do you start thinking about it? How did you I know that we both went to Mike Ferry originally, but how did that all happen? Uh I mean right out of school. Uh, right. At, I, I, my undergrads in, in finance, uh, right out of, uh, my undergrad shortly after I, uh, I got a master's in real estate finance. I've always been interested in real estate. Uh, I always liked that it was tangible. I had other buddies that worked in hedge funds and other areas of finance and, you know, you can't really touch and feel that sort of thing. And I like to sort of be boots on the ground and, and sort of be able to walk a property and figure out ways to add value. So, uh, I've always been interested in real estate. You know, I think my father gave me the, the rich dad, poor dad, when like everybody else's story, right? Like when you were, I don't even remember, I was probably in fifth grade, uh, fourth grade. And, um, you know, was reading books like that, getting more and more interested and, in, you know, bought my first investment property. I think I was a sophomore in college, uh, bought some rental properties and, you know, it's, it's, spiraled since then and and somehow here i am 15 16 years later and it, it's really all i know and and really all i want to work in so um you know I, I i guess to sum it up i i got my license about 16 years ago um a friend that was in the industry it was funny i used to pass him every day on my way to the train to manhattan so i'd come out of my apartment i'd be ready to commute to the to Ms. manhattan and uh, I would pass this guy who owned a real estate brokerage every day. And he's like, dude, where are you going? I'm telling him I'd work in real estate finance in Manhattan. At the time, I was helping like developers and raise money from investors. And they would buy shopping centers and, and multifamily property. And he'd be like, you know, you should get your license. Just do it on the side. So I, I actually finally took him up on it, got my license, did it on the side. And, you know, any, the office that I started in, they hated rentals. 
So anytime a rental came in, they'd be like, oh, give it to that guy. So I would do the rentals and I would do them at a high level and where I was in Hoboken, you could do a rental and make a thousand bucks. So I started to figure out how to do like five rentals a week and you make five grand in a week. And then I would actually shy away from the sales. There was a couple months where I did, you know, 15, 20 rentals in a month and I'm like, holy shit, I could do this, you know, part time and make this money part time. Uh, this is pretty good. This is better than bartending or something like that. Uh, and then I realized, Hey, you know, there's a hell of a lot more money in sales. So I sort of spiraled into sales and, and here we are, man. So if, if you're going, I guess the way you see real estate right now or your business and you, you come from like the, you know, the finance background and real estate investing, um, from the corporate level, um, now that you're in it, you're like small business, kind of you're the entrepreneur boots on the ground, like you said. How are you, how do you see the landscape of, of you or, and like, or your vision moving forward? I know we're going right to it here, but I just, I'm, I get so many questions when you start, you start bringing all this up. How do you see yourself moving from here or from now and up in, into, into the future? Like, so, I mean, I, I went from individual agent to realizing that, you know, I didn't want to work with all the buyers. Right. So I, I brought on a buyer's agent and it wasn't necessarily that I didn't want to work with the buyers because I actually do like working with buyers, but there's, it's a lot more time intensive. Uh, so hired one buyer's agent, added a few buyer's agent, uh, agents. And now how would we move this into the future? The goal is to just try to set up an organization where agents can plug into our system and all they have to do is four things every day, day right? Prospect, lead follow-up, go on appointments and handle negotiations. We do everything else for them. Admin and administrative stuff, support, coaching, training, lead provider, all that stuff. I actually was just getting off another call with another agent who put us on the spot or put me on the spot and said, Hey, why would I join your team when I can, you know, go to EXP by myself and, you know, have no, no, uh, you have a hundred percent split after a $16,000 cap. And what I said to him was that, you know, just for me to hold your seat within our team probably cost me, you know, three to $4,000 a month. So if you were to go out on your own, start your own website, get your own follow-up boss account, go buy your own leads, set up your own website with Sierra, you know, get phone lines, signs, uh, you know, business cards. I mean, it starts to add up. So my goal is to set up that platform for agents to plug into and so that they can again just focus on income producing activities. And th that makes that makes a lot of sense and you're right if getting started and in general one it's it's tricky because just you have to learn so much, right? Two it's there's a, there's a cost capital layout to do so. Second, you know, third is that if you're partnering with somebody who's already done it. I mean, just the time that you're going to cut just by following someone's footsteps. It's going to yep. be it's going to pay for itself. Well, if you think about it, right? Like I'm trying now, we just joined EXP actually today. So I can, I can, cool. Congratulations. I can share that with you. Yeah. Uh, although it feels like the transition has been like nine months, but we can actually start telling people about it today. I joined for the reason that there are people who, I'd say the big players that are doing 500, 1,000, 2,000, 2,000 deals a year are primarily all at eXp. So my goal was for me to collaborate with them. By me collaborating with them and learning what they're doing, I can then bring that information, those lead systems, those those uh, structures and such to back to my team and be able to support them at a much higher level. So yes, the agents on my team are joining me because I'm setting up the platform for them, but I look at it as my sponsor and the people that are above me that I'm looking to collaborate with at eXp have sort of set it up for me too, right? The goal in this whole, you know, world of business is just to try to speed up the process from, you know, and, and how quickly we can implement things. So if I can join eXp and speed up the process of how quickly I can, you know, learn how to deliver leads to my agents at a lower cost, then I want to speed up that process right away. T totally. So if I can speed up the process for an agent on my team, 
on how quickly or, or to shorten the time in between the closed transactions they have, then I want to be able to help them speed up that process too. Yeah, and it, it all rolls downhill. And the, the amazing thing about EXP, and, and it was funny, we've been talking about this for, for some time, Yeah, it's, it's a collaboration, right? And picking the sponsor above you that is actually, it's got to be able to, it's necessary, it's where you want to go, right? Because in that sponsorship, you can plug directly into them. You know, it's what's the cool part about it, and let this, you know, they're incentivized, right, yeah. by your success. So they're directly incentivized. So this them opening up their playbook of like, hey, look, we have 200 agents or we, we do, the, you know, you do 75, we do, we do 500 million. Like this is how we got from 75 to 500 million. And here, here you go. This is the playbook. And then you could take that playbook again, pass it back down. And then the people also that are even underneath you, single agents of smaller teams and, you know, that are at that are at 20 million they're looking to get to 75 right so yeah. then it's just it all works great that way and then there's there's built-in coaching right and and um for everybody and systems and processes and sharing and the, the, that and, collaboration um it's just built so intelligently like this the whole the whole business also i'll give you this then and the, this wasn't meant to be like an exp recruiting call because again i joined today i don't even like i am struggling still to tell my agents all the benefits because I don't know them all myself. So I can't even sell them on it because I, I don't know it all inside and out just yet. But what I can tell you, the reason that we went in the direction that we did was the first event that we went to for our sponsor, we had no intention of signing up. We went in, it was like almost like a college classroom, right? Probably a hundred people there, five, six different speakers. Every speaker who went up there, so the first guy spoke on social media, did a PowerPoint, it's got a QR code. He's like, hey, everybody scan this QR code. Scan it. On my phone within seconds on my Google Drive, I have his SOP for social media marketing for a small real estate team. Free of charge. I hadn't even joined eXp. He's just like, hey, I'm sharing this with you. Next speaker, this is on uh, transaction coordination SOP. Hey, scan this QR code. So I left there that day. Wasn't even thinking about joining eXp. But every single speaker who went up there, five or six speakers, gave their full SOP. And for those of you out there that don't you know, understand that lingo, it's standard operating procedure. So it's literally, like John said, the playbook. It's the steps to facilitate you know, a certain process within your system or your organization. So it, I was just blown away that that day I went back to my hotel room. On my Google Drive, I had six different SOPs that I don't need to spend months now trying to create. I'm literally gonna rip it off. I'm gonna put my name at the top of it. I'm gonna take out the stuff that doesn't apply to my team. I'm gonna add the stuff that does apply to my team and I'm gonna roll with it. I'm gonna change it along the way, but at least now I have a groundwork, right? Like a, a, a boilerplate template. So that to me was what impressed me about, you know, the whole EXP platform, right? Like the, those days of like relying on your broker uh, to sort of um, pave the way for you. To me, those days are gone. So now it's just, you know, the teams are the way of the future. And I think five, 10 years from now, it's just going to be, you know, some really big real estate teams running the majority of the business. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and then, and just having that factual, like, so there's one thing that you go out and, and, and someone's getting started is, is you know working on your sales skills? We we know that we we we've, we've yeah. done that. Working on your sales skills, your your tonality, your, your, everything on the phone, your your processes through, you know how you're organizing leads and, and your CRMs and all that stuff. That's all really really important. But then you, know, you start getting to the you know the higher levels. It is SOPs like your your on like how are you building your business? What are the systems and processes that you're using to to build your business and to delegate right? And those those manuals are are perfect and you, and you can like you said you can look at them and say yeah I'll, this wow I'll, I'll take this leave this take this leave this we're already doing that like and just go through it what, what's even crazier is and this is this not me boasting because i'm sure your numbers are similar let's just say in the last three years our team has generated five million dollars in gross commission right five to six million dollars in the last three years how the hell did we do that without actually having like a process and a structure where every client who comes through our office is treated the same way. 
Now I'm going to tell you firsthand, like all of our treat, our clients were treated, you know, you know, hands-on experience. I think 95% of them would say it was a pleasure working with us. It was a great experience. They got my home sold. They not only got a home, my home sold, but they got it sold quickly for more money. Usually all of these people would say it was a great experience, but I wouldn't say it was like the same scalable, duplicatable experience. Right. So it's just funny to me to say, wow, you, you know, a lot of us are out here playing in this game, making substantial numbers and, and doing some pretty big things without a defined playbook. Right. 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 It's yeah. just funny to yeah. think like, you know, even if you just started your business three years ago, it's like, Hey, how are we, how did we not make the playbook on year one? Why are we talking about the playbook on year three or year four? Have you ever read the book E-Myth? I don't think so. I think it was one of those ones I have in like my Audible library, but didn't. It changed my mind on that. It's exactly that. It's like how it's, you know, it's, it's just the fr making the business franchisable. Like how yeah. are you making the business franchisable and having the conveyor belt, right? And that changed my mind on everything. I think that's like the, one of the number one go-to. This is like Rich Dad Poor Dad on yeah. investment. This is like the number one go-to, like building a business. Uh, and then from that point on, it was just like, yeah, it's, it, it is, it's a, how are we building a handbook? How are we building, how are we handling each situation the same, right? How are we making it so e yeah. duplicatable and, and just, but it's uh, tough because like we become so obsessed with, you know, obviously you and I grew, grew up in like the same coaching program. You literally have your blinders on and anything that's like, I was so bad for a long time that anything that wasn't a listing, I didn't pay attention to it. So there would be a great investment opportunity on my desk. And if it, if the seller wasn't ready to list the house, I, I, and I wasn't looking at it as a listing, I would just look, I would go skate right by it, you know? Yeah. And I had my blinders on. So I think what I'm saying is I would just be so focused on hunting for the next deal. Like most salespeople are that I wasn't saying, Hey, I should document every step of the business so that one day I can remove myself. Right. Um, and not that I'm looking to retire anytime soon, but it would be nice to be able to remove myself from certain aspects of the business. I just said, yeah, yeah. I just sat down like on this creative financing like seminar that was here locally by this, this guy is like 75 years old and he's just been doing it for, for forever. And he yeah. like, started to hop the seminar going, real estate is a thinking sport, not an action sport. And I was like, hold on. I was always told that it was an action sport. Like, it's not a thinking sport. So it's like, I think, and then I'm starting to realize like from the investment side of what, or what, whatever he was doing is that he's to the point where now he has something come through and he's thinking about how he wants to take, you know, move forward on it, how he's thinking about it. And then he's, and then he's structuring the, the trans, the deal the way he wants to. Right. So yeah. on the investment side, that's what he's doing. But like, so I, I kind of thought about this now is like, we have somewhat of the luxury now to start doing real estate as a thinking sport. Like in the kind of what you're saying is, is basically now backing off of the action. Like we were like going after listing and I'm still trying to pull myself off of that as well, which is that drug yeah, <laughs> and going through it and start, and start documenting, you know, do whatever it takes, but just like getting outside the business and start documenting those processes and delegating it. And then leads me to the like, next question I think is like the, one of the things that I think that we've always are looking for is, is better talent to be able to delegate to, right? So once we have those processes in place and how you structure your business and finding the, finding the right people, as well as, um, you know, the BAs, whatever that is, but having the right people to delegate that those SOPs and making sure the check, check balances and all that stuff. How are you guys doing that? Or how have you been successful with that or unsuccessful too? So, I mean, I, I would say it's constantly changing. If you asked me three months ago, my answer would probably be different than it is today. And three months from now, it would probably be different again. But I'd say the biggest, one of the best exercises actually came from Aaron Novello. Um, and, and he probably got it from somebody else. But again, it's all about collaborating. Was to sort of draw an org chart for yourself, right? Or an accountability chart, as we call it in EOS. Uh, and figure out all the roles that I'm in right now, right? Am I the marketer? Am I the one who's bringing the deals in? Am I the one who's cutting the checks to our agents? Am I the one who is actually going on the appointments? Am I the one who, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, when, when you run your own team, I'm also the IT guy and, uh, you know, 
I wear a lot of different hats. So figure out all the roles that you're in and then slowly try to delegate the ones that you're probably not either not good at, don't enjoy doing. Um, and then there's another reason to delegate, not good at, don't enjoy doing, and it's probably not the best use of your time. Um, and just figure out the ones you want to stay in. So delegate the other ones, but you can't delegate them. And, and of course, until you have a system in place. So it's hard to do it all at once, but figure out, hey, all right, I don't like doing, doing the the bookkeeping at the end of each month. And I'm not trained in that, so it's probably not the best use of my time. So I went out, I got a virtual assistant who does bookkeeping. And, you know, for a very, very reasonable amount, I think it's like $3, $4 an hour. We pay her on average $15 a week. Um, and she does all of our bookkeeping. Right? She reconciles the credit card, bank statement, which is what I used to do on like a Sunday when it was, and it was painful. But I made a little quick system. Doesn't have to be beautiful or pretty, but she closes out our books each month. And then, then uh, I have another girl who does like all of our finances. She keeps track of all of our credit cards. Uh, those two work together hand in hand. Commission invoices, uh, all that stuff. And I created a quick, simple SOP for her. And now she took that off my plate. I don't even, you know, I, I oversee what she's doing, but uh, the majority of the, the legwork she does. So I would say we've been able to delegate a lot of the, the administrative type work to virtual assistants, which is amazing. Um, and then there are certain tasks, in my opinion, that, you know, need to be done by somebody who's probably in the office. So somebody who's a U.S. based uh, person that we've been able to, you know, delegate like a TC position to that person or a listing coordinator position to somebody who is in our office. So trying to get all that off of my plate and actually b treat this like a business, um, that's, that's scalable. So I would say that's probably the best, uh, you know, uh, suggestion for somebody to try to get a little bit more off their plate, write down everything that you're doing right now and figure out, you know, is that the best use of your time? Good. And that's, that's great advice. I always, I always wanted to ask you this question. I know when we, we first met, um, you, we were, again, we were single agents working, um, taking listings, giving out our buyer leads, that sort of thing. Um, I, I know Kiro because I was role-playing with Kiro in the mornings and I know and then you decided you, you wanted to partner, you're partnering with Kiro. I know you had your, your brokerage and you're partnered with Kiro. You know, I'm always thinking, you know, partnerships are, are, are challenging always because of, you know, just like every marriage, you know, 60% of marriages end in divorce. So, but they're always challenging. So, but I also realized the benefit of them too, of, of to joint venture with somebody because you can delegate things as well, or, or at, least, at least having someone there, right, to, to bounce things off of. What made you say, hey, look, I don't want to do this on, on my own anymore. I, I want to bring on Hero, a partner, and then we can do this kind of do this whole thing together. And how, is it, how has that been helpful for you? Yeah, so uh, we had decided to join forces. So we're actually now separate, um, but still, you know, very amicable. Uh, we still do our podcast together. We just now run two different teams. Um, but you know, uh, the reason we had joined forces at time at, at that time for the last three years or so, um, and he went to EXP as well. So we both just sort of went separately, same sponsor. Um, so I would say the reason we joined forces is because I would be the kind of agent who would come in, shut my office door, put on my headset and just prospect and bang the phones. And, um, but I also wanted to have a team and I felt like it was ne like, I was never really the team leader type. Like I wasn't the one who was like jumping on the table, screaming affirmations, getting everybody pumped up, trying to inspire and lead. Whereas Kiro ha is very much a teacher. Like he could take it, you know, he could pull up a chair and sit next to you for two hours while you're making calls and help you with your tonality and your inflection and, and your closing skills and he'd, he'd be listening to your calls and helping you think, you know, and I, I sometimes am not the most patient person, uh, with that stuff. You too. So, but I, yeah. I can admit that. So where, um, you know, he, he was a better trainer and a, a better coach. 
Uh, so he certainly offset where I, you know, where I lacked. So uh, I think if, if you're considering partnering up with somebody, what I would say is just make sure that, uh, you know, if it is like a 50, 50 partnership, that what you're asking them to do is worth 50%, right. Of the business. Uh, if not, then it's okay to have them as a 25% partner or 75% partner. It depends what they're bringing to the table. Just make sure you know, they're bringing something that maybe you're not able to bring. It's almost just like delegating, you know? Sure. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, cause I'm, I'm, I guess, you know, we hear of this um, people these days are talking about, um, having, you know, giving, setting up a business and having someone an operator that runs the business. Right. And that, so they can give you some more time to do other things and stuff. So I was always interested, you know, always interested as well as bringing somebody on. Sometimes it feels at the odds, it feels like, oh my gosh, I, I need somebody else to, to be able to collaborate with, or just to, just to give off some of the responsibility. So I was always just curious how that worked and why you, why you thought about it that way. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And then from, well, I from... still think I need like an integrator, you know? Yeah. Cause it, yeah. Again, if, if I were to write, if I were to do that, my own exercise that I was describing before of what positions I'm still in, uh, a lot of them is like, you know, our integration type positions, right? Like, how do you see that? How, how do you, how do you see what, what, what does an integrator mean to you? Like in your business and like, how do you see that? Like, what position would that fill in your, like right now, if you went out and hired someone today? I guess it's some, sort like, I'm actually speaking to somebody now who I'm, I'm really excited about. I had interviewed him for a transaction coordinator position. I have no idea why he applied for it, but he, he's not a good fit for that position, but his background is more like ops and client services. And, uh, he worked at better mortgage or better real estate, which, uh, I don't know they were at an online startup, but anyway, his big role was, um, workflows, integration, SOPs. So I'm really like, I said to him verbatim yesterday, I'm like, you know, we really do. I'm being transparent with you. We really need somebody to come here and help me like build out this SOP and figure out the steps of each process and not only build it out, but actually implement it. And when somebody's not following the policy, we need to call them out and make sure they understand the policy. And if things need to be changed, then we're updating the policy. And I'm like, you know, this is not the sexiest thing is just like creating SOPs. And he was dead serious. He's like, Hey man, I think SOPs are sexy. And I was like, <laughs> I like this guy, but anyway, it, it, what does the integrator do? It's, Hey, we just signed up for a new lead service. Let's just say it's realtor.com leads are coming in and they're coming in. We use follow-up boss. They're coming in to follow up boss, but they're not going to the right agents. If agents don't call them quickly, what happens to the lead? Does it go back to me? Does it go to another agent? Do all the agents have equal chance to get this lead? When you call a lead, do you have to call them three times in the first day? Do you have to leave a voicemail? If, we, if, if the lead responds, do we have AI to reply to the, them and text them? And somebody really to like, honestly, it's a big problem solver. It's like, hey, we signed up for something. It's costing us a hell of a lot of money, hell of a lot of money. Can you just make sure it's working right? And not only that, but make sure everybody in our ecosystem is using it so that I can sort of focus on other things and 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 they don't they have you have a meeting with them once a week or or maybe for five minutes during the in the morning or something and they're not asking you they're solving the problem and there's yeah. like hey this is the problem i solved it this is the solution like what do you think yeah i think that's great good move forward right it's yeah. instead of like hey you you going in there asking them to do it right so yeah which which has been my experience in the past <laughs> <laughs> well i'm always a big believer in like hey if you have a problem like if we're working together and you're working within our environment, if you have a problem, you know, come to me with two or three solutions and I'll pick which one I think is the best, but don't come to me and be like, Hey, how do I fix this? You know, come to me with me, come to me with the problem and say, Hey, I think there's three ways to fix this a, B and C, which one would you prefer? And I'm like, B done, you know, but don't be like, Hey, how do we fix this? So I would say, but you know, it's, it's a hard position to sell to somebody to say, Hey, we want you to come over here, fix all of our problem. We've got some problems that exist now, and we've got some new problems that are going to pop up tomorrow. We want you to take care of all of them. So to me, that integrator position, uh, 
you know, is like an ops position or COO. And that person should probably get a percentage of upside, you know, year over year revenue, growth, something so that they feel like they've got skin in the game and that they're, you know, in line, right? Like, hey, I'll put all these problems out. And the goal would be that once those problems are solved, there's going to be new problems, but that will increase revenue and I can participate in that. I like so that. I think if you, if you have somebody putting fires out all day long, but there, there's no like growth plan for them, it's tough. I'm sure that, that wouldn't incentivize me. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So moving, um, three year, one year, three year, five year plan, like you just joined EXP. Awesome. Welcome aboard. Um, thanks man. How do you, how, yeah. How do you see yourself now growing? You have so many more opportunities with downline now as well, like sharing playbooks, um, doing, I see you guys doing webinars, which is something that we're looking to do in 2023. I'm going to talk, we'll talk with you about it too. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm out of ideas, so I'd love to talk about it for, right. for webinars. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, Our VA is like, Hey, we need to do one every week. I'm like, I'll be there. I'll talk. But what, like, what's the topic? You know? So like, it's probably as simple as just sitting down and figuring out some topics, but yeah. I mean, just, just kind of, again, like I think how you were just talking about too, I think I was just listening to someone yesterday on how to build their podcast, you know, bigger. And they were talking about like, what's your. I just have it here. What's what's your C one premise? And they're like, basically, why do people want to spend thirty minutes of their time with you? Like, who's your audience? And then like, I think it's like you coming to a webinar and like, what's it's the same thing is like, what's the value you have? And here's my QR code. Again, like here, take on my, you know, my SOP and just keep delivering that value. I think, uh -huh. but just always like with like the person that, that just lit the audience in mind and the value that you're delivering. Like, I think then I think that's just. You're going to be successful, I would think. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you said a lot there. It, I think plans for growth, I, I think to, um, you know, build the team to refine our process. Um, you know, I'm, I'm such a systems person or I want to be such a systems person. I want to get all that stuff in play so that when a new agent joins the team, uh, they experience the same sort of events and onboarding process as other, you know, the person who joined right before them. Uh, or when a client comes into our pipeline, they're treated the same way as the past client. So that that's the goal for the next year. Uh, and of course, to grow the business. I mean, this year we should close around 200 transactions. Um, so that's, that's a big goal for us. Uh, the big thing for me has always been... Um, you know, I don't want to be that guy that's got 50 people on the team and everybody does two deals and we do a hundred deals. My goal is to have, you know, agents on the team that are doing a minimum of at least like 20 transactions. So, you know, I'd rather do 400 deals with 20 people and everybody doing 20 deals each, um, than do 400 transactions with, you know, uh, everybody doing one or two deals. So that, that's the plan going forward. And you know, the podcast, like I, I, you know, the downline idea at eXp is attractive to me, but to me, if that comes from collaborations like you and me doing stuff like this, doing webinars, doing a podcast, then that's cool. But I don't think that that would ever be like my main focus or anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, if we could collaborate and of course build a downline while we're doing it, then I'm, that's exciting to me. We could do, we could do podcasts just about, you know, like it, this whole world of podcasting is just, it's, I think, I think I've been so wrapped up in real estate for so long that I'm like excited to just like work on something else. So I just told our virtual assistant yesterday, I'm like, you need to find me a podcast coach. So she's been hunting for me to find me a podcast coach, which is sort of cool to me. Um, just on like, um, I don't know if this is, you know, part of the episode or not, but it's like, you know, there's so much I don't know, right? Like, how do we get our subscribers up? How do we um, add value? How, how do we create a hook? Uh, I've got some really cool guests lined up. We just signed up. Tom Ferry is going to be on um, in a couple weeks. Uh, I'm working and on... How are, and how are you get, getting the... Like, cause that's one thing I'm run behind you how are you getting these guests just a numbers game man like prospecting i'm just freaking reaching out to everybody 
And you are, you're having your B or someone email a VA. I am. DM. Okay. Just yeah. DM me. Yeah. Yeah. But I felt like we've got enough, like we've got 36 episodes or something now, uh, yeah. released. Um, so I feel like people, you know, start seeing some familiar faces published, uh, and you know, those episodes that, that are out there now. And I think people are seeing those and saying, Hey, oh, if, uh, it, well, you know, what's really interesting is you have one big guest on. And then all of a sudden, some other people were like, oh, because we had a guy from Million Dollar Listing from Bravo, uh, Tyler Whitman, come up. Once he came on, a bunch of people were like, oh, if Tyler did it, I'll do it. So that sort of spitballed. And now we got Tom Ferry coming on. We have, you know, Ricky Carruth from EXP. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We got him lined up. I'm excited about him. We got Coach Bill Pipes. Uh, he's coming on soon. Um, well, I don't want to tell you which one because it's not solidified yet, but one of the Sharks uh from shark tank one of the, nice. one of the current sharks um we're talking to him but just trying to figure out how to monetize it and grow it right like uh i don't know if it's going to be a huge revenue gen generator i don't think i'm like joe rogan but why not it would yeah. be nice to cover our cost <laughs> yeah you know I, I so i jumped on i was in the gym working out and i and I saw this like Instagram thing that came up and I just like how to grow your followers from like zero to a hundred thousand followers. And so I jumped on this thing yesterday and this call with guy and the guy was like, are you just on YouTube? Because that's not kind of what we do. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, you actually got to jump. You actually got to start. I was just talking with, with Sebastian about this. You actually kind of have to have a host kind of what Arrow was doing and they put you on Spotify. He's like, you grow your spot, your, every, all platforms. They're not just YouTube, you're growing Spotify. Yeah, we're all on all of them. Okay, so we're on Spotify. All I don't even know all of them. Apple. Once you're on there, he's like, then I can start coaching, helping you. Like, because, but like, in well, we're refining. He taught me that that C1 premise, and which you guys, I, I, I kind of like. Who was the guy? Ah, I, uh, I, I don't, I don't even. I just followed it. I don't know, but yeah. um, I can send it. I can send you his number. Reach out to him if you have but, it. Um, I'm just curious. Yeah, I will. Um, and but he was like going through there. He's like, you need. You just basically, once you have your C1 premise and you get really clear on like, you got to get really clear on who is your audience, right? And then and that, that was just his first thing to me. Get really clear on your who your audience is and then get every, the next, everything else is just like artwork and like yeah. your titles and everything. Thumbnails. Thumbnails. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's a whole world that's like, you know, like I, I, I just nerd out on this stuff. I'm like... I need to work on my like intro. Um, I need to ask better questions. I need to not talk over Kiro. I like we do we do sixty minute episodes. Part of me is like it's way too much. We should just do thirty minutes. Um, you know our audience is definitely realtors. Like we've gotten away from just like being valuable to buyers and sellers. Um, yeah, which is fine to me, right? If it's right. if a goal was part of part of it to be agent attraction, then I think then that's fine. Um, you know, like, I, I don't know. It, there's so stupid questions too. Sometimes me and Kiro are like buttoned up in suits. I'm like, should we look more casual? Should like, you know, it's like, there's so much shit. Like we have this nice studio. I always joke. I'm like, we're the guys that got keys to the Ferrari, but we don't know how to drive it. Like if you have us on mute, we look pretty good. But then when <laughs> you take the sound off, I'm like, we could sound a lot better with our questions, our introductions, but like, you know. We're building the plane as we're flying it, you know? Totally. Uh, he was talking about, too, is, like, the big thing for, like, YouTube, too, is going to be, like, and TikTok and everything is, is just the the video and audio. So not yours sounds great on your end. Like, we listened to mine, and we did our podcast before. Mine's terrible. Yeah. Right? And so they said the, the tricky part with the, with with a virtual one is getting everybody's audio and, and, yeah. and visual good. And then so for, like, for, so it can go viral. So yeah. he's like, hey, maybe you want to send them just a mic every time you do your... Somebody said that to me too. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's like, po like, forget the cost of postage, but just the management <laughs> right. of like, did you get it? No, I didn't get it. Oh, it says it's at the post office. Oh, it's, it was lost. You know. Is it compatible with your computer? Do Can you, you send it, it back to me? How come you didn't right. send it back to me? It's like uh, yeah. painful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We just tried to send all of our guests that were on the podcast. I'm sure you probably got a gift but it, that we yeah. sent out. Thank you. Just coordinating that, like just to ask people where they live was like wild. And then yeah. getting boxes and gifts. I mean, 
So there's a lot of coordination. It, it is, but it, you have to treat it like a business if you want it to be a business. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, long story short, we're having fun with it. Um, I just can't do anything at a small level. So, uh, I think over Christmas break, I guess I played a game with myself the other day, actually, I was like, it was sort of like a prospecting game. Like we used to all always do like, Hey, I'm not going home tonight until I set a listing appointment. We used to always play that game. The other day I was like, I'm not going home until I send a hundred DMS to prospective guests for the podcast. So I literally sent a hundred of them and probably 80 people didn't reply, but I got some heavy hitters to show up and that's how, you know, uh, so that was on Saturday, this past Saturday. And then on Sunday I was in, um, forget where I was. I think I was in CVS with my wife, just like doing errands and shit. And I was like, Hey, 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 Tom Ferry. Tom said yes. Tom said yes. She's and, like, she's uh, like, who's Tom Ferry? She's like, all right, well, that's, you know, <laughs> Watch, be DM'd, like you asked him to be on it. Like, why wouldn't yeah. I? And I was like, no, 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 this is big. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but it, you know, I think it's because he went back and he saw that Matthew Ferry was on last totally. week or two weeks. And he saw that a lot of his coaching clients have been on. So, you know, we're, we're building it, but don't have it all figured out by any means, but trying to figure it out as we go. That's helpful. Yeah. Cause one of our, one of our goals is like, who is, who is going to be our, our big guest this year? And so now that, yeah, now, now that you, yeah, you've done it, I have to do it. So do it, man. That's good. I mean, I'm that's, that's, but see, that's, what's cool is like, if I tell you what's working, it doesn't, you're not taking guests away from us. Just that's allows right. us to all grow together. And then when you and I reunite in a month or so, you're going to share some ideas with me that, you know, that are going to help me. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. And like, uh, and that's something and that's something that's new, like it's somewhat of a new way of thinking for all of us. Right. It's just like, yeah. it's like collaboration, really collaboration is going to help us all go faster. You know, yeah. all, all ships rise with rising tides. Right. So everybody's going to move faster if they can collaborate more. And it's just getting into that, that thought process of this, like, dude, share everything, yeah. share it all. Be an open book and just share everything. And sometimes yeah. it feels like a little bit like, oh my gosh, I don't want to share, but dude, it, this, this share it. It's, it's yeah. going to be, it's going to come back to you tenfold. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it, it, I would say like, we always say like action is better than perfection. So just, just implement it immediately. It's going to be ugly and then refine it. Right. You know, like we had VAs helping us and, they were sending out calendar invites to guests, like high profile guests, wrong date. The guy was like, yeah, I could do February 5th at 3 PM. And they sent them like February 6th at 3 PM or two. And I'm like, you're in the wrong time zone. And it's like embarrassing, right? Like these count, like, and all these people are on the invites, the assistant, it's the studio, it's all. And like, you, you want to scream at first yeah, and you just and worry, you, like, I look like an idiot. <laughs> and then you're just like, you know what? Hey, whatever. So you, right. t you tell the person like, we got to have a more, a better system going forward, but it, there's always going to be uh, bumps in the road. You figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so true. So true. John, hey, man, I appreciate it, man. I really yeah, do. Of course. And, of course, um, anytime, I, always happy to yeah. share. Yeah. And like, let's, let's put our heads together again. Like you just said for our next podcast, let's, let's do something. Yeah. Share yeah, that again. name with, um, with me, that guy that was saying, uh, you know, if he's a coach or, or whatnot, cause I'm, you know, I will, I'm so I coachable that if like this guy was like, came on and was like, all right, wear this shirt, ask these questions, you know, stop talking yeah. so much. I would do whatever they tell me to do. Yeah. And I would just, I would just talk with them. Uh, I, I, I again, I just, I just, found, I just found them and sent you the text and the number up top. I'll just talk oh. with them, set up a call, set up a call with them and see what he says. Um, I haven't like, again, I just, found him on Instagram and he had some good points. So he ran me through a funnel. It, he asked, it was all the good questions. He's like on his Calendly link, he said, he's like, are you going to ghost me? Yes or no? Like, I was like, okay, really? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, oh, I was thinking about it, but no, I won't do it now. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, but I would yeah, just talk with him. Have a, I would have a, just a conversation. It was helpful for me. And you think he's like a podcast coach? So, so what I would, what he said is he grows podcast followers. So he's like, my, my goal is to grow. He didn't give me a price. He just says, I grow podcast followers. So he, he's going from, um, 
you know, if you think of these, like, well, what do you want to do with it? Because the idea is like, do you want to do a book deal? Do you want to do JV, like more JVs? Do you want to like, do you want to track realtors? Do you want to track down? Like, what do you, what do you want to do? You have to understand like what we want to do. And then we can start work like talking towards. And I was like, yeah, yeah. that's exciting. What's, uh, um, I want to be Mr. Beast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or yeah. what are those, those dudes, the Nelk boys or whatever? Yeah. I mean, yeah. for me, for me, it comes up as like, I, I want to do, I was like, what excites me? I, I love the idea of this. Uh, I, I just ran into like this creative finance stuff and like Pace Morby. That's, I'm not sure if you see him on YouTube. Yeah. But uh, he's going to be I, on our I show. Love, Pace. Is he? I signed him up. I've been going insane. Like, I don't even know who he is. I'll be honest. I, I don't know if we're still recording, but I, yeah. I don't even find, I don't have a problem saying this. Somebody else had posted something with him which brought me to his page. This is what we all do on Instagram, right? Somebody yeah. else posted something. It was like a Pineda, I think. Ryan Pineda brought me to Pace. I was like, okay, this I like what this guy's saying. I went to Pace's page. Saw he had a good amount of followers. Saw that I was in line with the message that we're trying to convey for our podcast. DM'd him. He said, uh, reach out to my team. Uh, I'm game. And then I did even some more research and realized he had like the TV show and some other stuff. And I was like, this is cool. Like, I think this guy would be a good fit, but I had already asked him. So it's almost like, like I was talking to my team this morning, like put the word out there. And if they say yes, then I have control now. Right. Like, but if you never ask him, then you don't know if the options open. Right. That's awesome. So yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. And, uh, you, like you said, though, the thing is, you you have like the the kick ass studio and stuff like that. So people also that's helpful as well, right? So the question is, do do I need to get kick ass studio before I can feel like equipped to ask these people? Maybe you know, because we're because uh, we're looking into that too. Yeah, and and yeah, pace. Um, check it out. Just sent them a a nice DM, and nice. Uh, he said yes. Uh. But keep in mind, just like setting appointments, sometimes they cancel. Like he just sent me his his email. So now my VA reached out to his assistant and said, hey, we'd love to have him on the show. Whether or not that person replies or not, uh, you know, it could be a bunch more follow-ups or just they could even say, hey, like we've looked at your subscribers and there's not enough. Come back to us. Um, but it's, you know, it's a follow-up game. Um, I don't know if it's the, the studio. I mean, uh, we had an interesting situation. This is our conference room, and me and Kiro were literally just going to convert this to be our studio. We went on Amazon. We bought all the fancy microphones, the lights, literally all the. We had four hundred boxes sitting in the front of our office, ready to set it all up. And our videographer, who was going to, he was going to record it for us. And the goal was he was going to come here once a week and just record an episode. And then, like three days before we were supposed to do our first episode, he's like, "Hey, I want to be honest with you. I don't necessarily know how to use Riverside." And I don't know all the ins and outs of everything. And I don't know if I'm your guy. And I was like, dude, we, uh, we're supposed to do an episode in like a couple of days. And, but what was interesting though, is he's like, I went on Google and I found a studio in your area and it's actually very reasonably priced. And he introduced me to the guy who owns the studio. And then I called him and the guy's, you know, a really, really good dude. And he's been great to us. So we've just been going there ever since. Awesome. Yeah. It, yeah. So it, it's nice to be able to just pop in. Like, you know, we always say we like jump in there, we make a mess, we scream and yell and do our show, and then we get out of there. But all yeah. the little kinks of like, does this camera work? Does this not work? Is the audio the right way? And like, they take care of all that. So, and you're just schedule, you're just scheduling it. And you have, you said you bought, you bought the package of like this many. We bought like 10 shows. episodes and then uh, we burned through those real quick. Uh, so yeah, we locked in a fee with him for per episode and, um, now we're just scheduling, you know, a lot of episodes. So dude, nice. we're booked through March. I'm pretty excited. How is it? How, how is, have you seen any kind of like bought, like anything good out of it? I, have you seen any like notoriety someone saying and like saw you, know, you like, yet or? A couple people here and there, like you go to an MFO event, people are like, oh, I saw the podcast or like, you know, random people will reach out or people in my database will be like, not necessarily engaging on the comments, 
or sharing or even liking. Like I sometimes I'm still not even getting my friends to like posts. I'm like, help me out here or subscribe. But when you're in a circle or when you bump into somebody, they'll say, oh, I'm seeing all that you're doing and I'm seeing it. But I, you know, I haven't seen any real significant change in lead yeah. flow or deal flow. But, uh, you know, I think all that will come. It's just having higher level conversations. And then I think the big thing I've learned too is just nurturing that relationship afterwards. So it's not just like a one and done. It's like, hey, that was really cool today talking to you, John, about growing podcasts. Let's figure out maybe we get, you know, uh, instead of going out and getting our own coach each, maybe we just create a mastermind, you know? Uh, cool. let, let's make it so that it's not just this one episode, but that we actually try to find a way to work together in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to that, I'm, I'm, I'm open completely. Yeah. Let's um, do it, man. Yeah. Um, but always, man, just thanks. And, um, let's, let's connect more. I'm excited to kind of hear what you're doing with yeah. EXP. And, uh, if you have any questions, let me know too. I, you know, thank you, man. I, I probably will. Um, I'm still trying to figure it all out, but I just see all the progress you guys are all having and, um, excited to be a part of it. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. So it's just something that just naturally comes just by adding value, like you were saying, yeah. and just doing that. Good. Good. Well, John, I mean, it, I, I appreciate the yeah. time. I know your time is valuable and you have other things going on just right now, especially just joining XP today. I just appreciate you jumping on with us. And, of course, um, man. Again, if whatever we can do or ever, whatever I can do to help or add value to you, man, always, we're here. So. 